and welcome to the Sussex Street Christian Centre Reflection Series, looking at the Gospel of Mark. We'll be working through the Gospel by subheadings, which would make up about 72 reflections. We hope that they are a blessing to you, and they help you grow your relationship with God, but also help you to be a part of his kingdom here on earth. Today we're looking at Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 23, and I'm reading from the New International Version. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders, instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. He continued, You have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, Honour your father and mother. And... Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares what might have been used to help their father and mother is Corban, that is, devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus, you have nullified the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like that. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach, and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared all food clean. He went on. What comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of the person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All these things come from inside and defile a person. This passage is divided into two parts about the subject of purity. The Pharisees are talking about outer cleanliness in the first part and Jesus is talking about inner purity in the second part. Let's start with part one. This is covered by verses 1 to 13. I'll set the scene. Jesus is in, in Jerusalem with his disciples when the Pharisees and the teachers of the law come up to him with a question about hand cleaning. They're always eagle-eyed to find ways to undermine Jesus, his teaching or the actions of the group. Today, it's about the ritual of proper hand washing according to the oral law in the Talmud. This is very important to them because it is mentioned... 345 times. They felt that Jesus and his disciples were not washing their hands in the correct manner and the correct ritual before eating. This was not about normal cleanliness to prevent illness. Jesus replies with a quote from Isaiah 29, where Jesus is, uh, Isaiah rather, is berating the people for going their own way and not doing what God had commanded of them. They do not honour him with their hearts, that their teachings are merely human rules. The Pharisees have ignored God's commandments and substituted it 
with their own rules and by doing so have limited what God can do by their ever-growing list of rules and traditions. Jesus calls them hypocrites, meaning that they are concealing their true motives under a cloak of make-believe or using rituals to keep the people from reaching out to their God. Jesus is talking about the defilement of the law, which keeps the people away from their true relationship with God. Perhaps they were so caught up with doing religion that they were missing out on growing a relationship with God. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, states that those things as a Pharisee he thought were valuable, he now considers worthless compared to what Christ had done for him. But that they must keep their minds on whatever is true, pure, right, holy, friendly and proper. Be a true follower of Christ's teaching. He also talked to the Galatians about previously being zealous for the traditions of his fathers, but states that he now sees this with a wrong attitude. Paul is therefore aware of the restrictions placed upon him and others through the rules and traditions. Now Peter tells his readers in his first letter that they are ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your fathers by the precious blood of Christ. This is now a repeated message to the believers in Jesus' time and also the new church that was growing following Christ's death, resurrection and ascension. So let's now take it up to current times. How do the traditions of our churches prevent us from growing our relationship with God? What are the traditions in our churches that we see as being very important? And finally, do they keep us so involved that we lose our sense of closeness to God? One of the things that Jesus pointed out to the Pharisees is that there was this action called Corban. This was an oath sworn to give some money or belongings to God. But it sidestepped a commandment that was fundamental to the Jews because it was in the Ten Commandments. Honour your father and mother. By saying that your gift was Corban, it let you out from looking after your parents in their time of need. The tradition or the rule of Corban, in a sense, cancelled out the word of God as it was written down in the Ten Commandments, indicating that the word of God was less important than the law. How can that be right? Are we caught up with some traditions or rules that prevent us from doing what is true, pure, right, etc.? Jesus rewrote or adjusted the Ten Commandments with a shortened version. Love God, love yourself, love your neighbour. If rules and traditions prevent us from doing any of these three things, then we're not truly following Christ's footsteps, I would say. Right, now on to part two, which is verses 14 to 23. Having spoken about outer cleanliness, Jesus talks now about inner purity to the crowd. Again, there are a lot of rules regarding what you can or not eat, as written down in Leviticus. Jesus is now carrying what you eat with what will not defile you, though it might make you ill if you're not properly prepared, with what comes out of the heart which will defile and dishonour you. He then leaves the crowd and goes into a home where the disciples as usual, ask for more clarity about what he's just said. He suggests that the thoughts, conversations, acts and schemes that people put together come from the heart and defile and dishonour that person. His list is long and covers physical actions against ourselves and other people. There's mental and emotional acts and poor judgement. In fact, most things that we can do or say or think about. Paul tells the Christians in Colossae to put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you, put on your new nature. How can we reduce or prevent ourselves from ticking any of those boxes above? 
I think it goes back to love God and walk in his ways. If we are close to God through reading his word, sitting at the feet of Jesus and waiting on him to speak to us, we will have that mindset for the day. We are less likely to wander away. Love ourselves. For some, this is more difficult because people tell us things that are hurtful and we take their comments on board. Perhaps in this situation we could use the armour of God. The list is in Ephesians 6. Paul tells us to be strong in the Lord. Gird up your loins. It's an old-fashioned phrase, really, but it means to tuck in all the loose ends that might be a danger to you as a soldier. So what are our loose ends? What do we have to be tucking in? We need to get our head ready for the battle ahead, be it a mental or spiritual battle. This is what is the belt of truth. Then there's the breastplate of righteousness or perhaps a clean heart. He also says, have your head covered by the helmet of salvation. God has saved you because you are worth it. Keep under the banner of his love. And then finally, love others with the love God has given you. Share it. Find out what people need and supply it. Be Jesus' feet and hands and voice. Don't expect others to do it. Honour those who are older. Be a servant to those in need. Be Christ. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you for walking with us at this time. It isn't easy during this new lockdown. So help us to help ourselves by keeping close to you. Help us to be and do whatever and wherever you need us. Amen.